Yes, thank you very much. My name is Thomas, and I'm happy to present, present to you my research topic about the initiation of data acquisition based on a 4D BIM model for lean construction progress control. Um, you see here two affiliations. Um, that's because I'm a head of BIM management for Weissen Freitag, which is a construction company in Germany. We, we are quite large, uh, and I'm also a PhD student at the RPTU. Um, Kaiserslautern Landau. Uh, we have seen also another presentation by my colleague Marius already. Um, so we're working quite well on different topics. Um, what about my motivation? Um, since I'm quite interlinked with my practical uh, colleagues on, on site, I know that the BIM models are quite interlinked with the actual construction site for the development and design phase. So if you if you're using a BIM model for the design phase, that's, that's, uh, that's working quite well. You get all the information you need, but when, com when it comes to the execution phase, um, it doesn't really work. Uh, if we work with a BIM model, um, we are, um, well, at the beginning of the implementation of BIM use cases, but if, if you imagine like all the researchers you, you may have read, uh, they are not really exten extensive use of, of any BIM models. That's not just at our company, but that's just right, the common practice in Germany that BIM models are used in the design phase, but then it comes to the execution phase, uh, there are actually no use of it. Um, that represents my, my broken chain. Um, we even have, um, wait, one step back, um, it's quite hard to, to integrate information from a construction site, like the construction diary, any reports, uh, minutes, minutes of meeting, or weather conditions, survey protocols. They are, they are existing like documents, but to integrate them, uh, for example, link, uh, link data, it's quite complicated to, to, to implement. We even have lost, uh, lost and missing data, so this ends up to labor-intensive and error-prone data, manual data integration into the BIM model, and of course, uh, if I tell my colleague you have to do uh, that all manually, uh, they will tell me, please go home, Thomas. Um, this leads up to an inaccurate as built documentation, as you can imagine, if you have an as built model which is not accurate, you have not all the information, you actually cannot use it, and maybe you should like get back to the 2D drawings. Um, well, the operation and maintenance phase, of course, you cannot use the BIM model because it's not uh, fully accurate. That comes to my problem statement. Um, this is what we have seen right now. This is because of uh, because we have complex and heat, ge heat generous construction processes due to one-off production in civil in bridge engineering. Every bridge is different in Germany. We have seen two presentations. Uh, we have seen 43,000 bridges in Germany, so you can imagine uh, they are all different. Of course, they are, they are similar, but still the construction process of a construction company, they are yeah just different. Um, the predominantly manual labors and error-prone monitoring of construction progress is also another problem. Um, it is done manually and, well, it's time-consuming. Usually, uh, due to one um, paper I've read, it takes up to 60, it takes up to one week in 65% uh, of the cases to get data from the construction site to, to the office so you can process them and just imagine data is one week old, uh, well, you cannot use them at all because they are just wrong after one minute. Um, manually planned data acquisition leads also to a lack of accuracy and degree of coverage. And um, all the other researchers I've read, um, they are require high performance hardware and complex algorithm, training data, synthetic data, real data. Um, they are necessary for processing the acquired data. So my focus is uh, not to use high performance hardware and a complex algorithm just to do a like a lean construction progress uh, with um, smart considerations. The objectives of the research is to develop an analytical model that defines tasks that can be required by drones by leveraging all the information I have in the 4D BIM and to develop a lean construction progress control for efficient integration of the acquired point cloud data, doesn't matter if it's slider or photogrammetry, um, for short circle uh, feedback circles. I do have some requirements. Um, of course, the 4D BIM needs to be continuously updated. If it's one week old, I cannot use it. So it needs to have the information up to date. Um, partially or fully automatic data acquisition, user lighting drones with LIDAR or photogrammic technologies. Um, I focus here on the, the spatial data um, 
and I need a uniform level of detail with a schedule and the BIM, so the object is linked to its representative tasks and not um, the, the whole bridge is linked to maybe two tasks. Let's go to the task-based initiation of data acquisition. So beginning of my, t uh, of my framework is of course the 4D BIM, which is a uh, which is part of uh, a, the schedule is part of the 4D BIM and also the BIM. Uh, the BIM can be um, can be be in uh, more than one partial model. So I'm I'm not focusing on one IFC file or BIM model just for the 4D BIM. Um, I do start with the evaluation of a task within the within the schedule, which is in the domain of activities, and I do run an algorithm which will check if the, the task creates an, a geometric change. That means if you, like for example, if I have a concrete, uh, concrete work, the actual concrete geometric is a change, but if you, if you do the finishing after the, the stripping of form work, only the finishing, there's no geometric change um, available. If we don't have a change available, uh, no data acquisition can be done um, in the next step we check if we can simplify the task to a critical surface. Just imagine you have one task stripping the formwork, which is linked to maybe 400 objects, which consists of maybe 600 surfaces. Um, and if you automatically derive all the surfaces, you cannot demine um, which surface needs to be acquired by the drone. So we will check this if there's one one or maybe two critical surfaces uh, which needs to be acquired um, from one object, as you can see in the, in the middle below, or maybe two objects. Um, and we will do a check if the um, critical surface can be seen from the sensor at the current construction state. Uh, or are there any obstacles in the way? Um, yeah. After this check, uh, of course, if, if no simplification can be done, no uh, drone-based data acquisition can be done. Um, but if yes, we will check if the navigatable space is available. That means the drone has its dimensions. Uh, it needs to, to fly around, of course, so maybe one, maybe 1.5 meters. Depends of the drone and the sensor, of course. And we will check if there is uh, any statutory safety distance. In Europe, we have the uh, regulation that a drone can fly up to five meters to um, uninvolved people, which is in the bridge engineering uh, quite often because the other lane is, uh, they are uninvolved people, and we need five meters space the, uh, safety distance to our construction site, and yeah, this will be checked. If no available space is there, uh, no bay, uh, drone, Based data acquisition can be ban done, but if yes, of course, we, we can uh, implement and um, execute the data acquisition. Now we do a jump. Um, the drone-based data acquisition was done. We got a point cloud. It doesn't matter if LIDAR or photogrammetry. Um, we will, well, that's one, one step back. Um, in the second, here in the middle, the task will be simplified to a surface. The surface will be, will be saved in a, JSON format, um, which we then we will be using here to cover the critical surface by filtering a task-specific point cloud. Um, as you can see here in the blue color with the yellow, with the green vertices, the red um, represents the task-specific point cloud. We will generate a, gener uh, a volume of interest using the tolerance value of the component tolerance due to national standards and the accuracy of technolo uh, acquisition technologies, and maybe do further filtering of a task-specific point cloud uh, by the normal vector that the point uh, needs to have an inclined angle of maybe 70 degrees. Um, and after that, we will then apply the RENSEC algorithm on our filtered point set to check if there is the um, the critical surface in our point cloud, and if so, the information can be get back into the 4D BIM. This was done by a, uh, this was verified by a case study. For example, here the, we see a bridge abutment wall um, for, the, uh, for, for a bridge in Bochum, in Germany. Um, the drone-based data acquisition for the task, uh, stripping, uh, formwork stripping of the abutment wall, so you just imagine there's a lot of formwork um, which was removed 
the critical surface which was defined is, an, is highlighted in the green color. Um, here you see the point cloud which was acquired by a DJI drone um, with a lot of pictures of course. Um, the point cloud was, was uh, computed in Metashape from Achi software. The volume of interest is highlighted in the yellow color. I hope you can, you can see it. Um, I can see it, so I hope so, you too. <laughs> and here is the uh, filtered point set of the point cloud for the volume of interest, which can be then uh, be compared to the critical surveys and the information can, back, uh, can, get, uh, can be reported back to the 4D model. Let's come to the conclusion. Um, this is quite a novel approach for lean data acquisition because we're focusing on only the data we want to acquire and not the whole construction site as it done um, up to date right now. Because in our opinion, acquisition should serve a specific need of information and is in, in our case, it should be initiated event-based and demand-oriented. So you don't record, uh, record the whole construction site according to the pool principle uh, from the lean morphology of the, from the based on the BIM. In our case, we do an automated and quality assured data acquisition to guarantee that our information uh, delivery can be, can be done at short circle intervals. Um, and our approach is quite suitable for infrastructure projects such as spray, uh, bridge or road construction because we need the navigational space. Um, indoor, maybe it could be possible, but that's another use case and someone else can like check the, the indoor use case. Um, our outlook for the future works, um, we, what you have seen right now was just for one specific task, the formwork stripping, but we want to do that, of course, for further tasks, maybe for every task, or we have a uh, detection rate for every task of maybe 90% or something, but we are not there right now. Um, then we want to extend our approach to other project types such as plant construction, sea logs, uh, or other road construction, not only on, on bridge engineering. Um, then what you have seen right now is just in demonstrator a real uh, a use case, but if we want to actually use its practical use, uh, test its practical use, we need to integrate it into a real project. So the construction, man construction manager is uh, really needs this kind of information or, and not have a parallel system. And we want to establish an interface for automatic updating the, the schedule and the 4D BIM and other f uh, information requester uh, within the CDE. Of course, this was just on a local hard drive, but this data needs to be in the cloud in the CDE so all the project participants can, can use it. Yes, thank you very much and I'm happy to answer some questions. Thank you.